What's up YouTube, it's Fitzbro and this is your season five guide to the Mongols. I've been maining the civilization for the past week, was able to reach the conqueror level, and I really haven't played them in other seasons. So I've been really learning the civilization kind of from a new lens and have a few different builds that's gonna help you get started with them. The first one's gonna be a fast feudal into double reduction of Keshix. And then the second one's gonna be your more traditional uh, Spearman and Tower Rush opening. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. So if you're getting into the civilization or just looking to try some new things out here at season five, you'll something you try and if you enjoy this video make sure you join me down in the discord i've got a aw4 role and strategy uh channels for each of the civilizations where i'm picking a new civilization each week to focus on okay let's get into it first thing we're gonna do here is we are going to set our towns there next to the wood line and i'm gonna put all my build builders to chop and then one to go build the uvu now i'm actually planning on putting them all on food and gold immediately but just for the opening it's hard to really open and immediately kill a sheep just because they're going to do some weird things. So I, what I do is I just do their initial drop off of 50 wood and then I will uh, put them back. Now, it also allows you in lots of, a lot of cases you might stay on this wood to build like your barracks and stuff. And so it gives you just, you know, a time, second to think about if you want to do something like that um, or if you want to open with a uh, wheelbarrow or anything like that. But in this case, uh, we're just going to get that wood and then I'm going to move everyone over to food. Okay, so I've got seven on food right now and I'm going to next transition uh, my next two. Well, I'm going to put, sorry, one more on the food. So we're going to have a total of eight on food and then we're going to put uh, our villagers on gold. So we're just going for a fast age up. Now, the tricky thing about this is... Um, if the opponent scouts, you're not doing spearmen, they're going to know they're completely safe from a spearman rush. But another thing to consider is that a lot of times people are kind of expecting the Mongols to spearman rush, and they might even like be dropping defensive towers, you know, preemptively. And this is going to kind of catch them off guard of they you're not expecting you to just age up really quickly and start raiding them. Um, so that can be kind of the nice thing about this. I kind of vary it up when I use this. It depends on civilizations. I like civilizations where I think they're going to be really greedy and trying to take town center expansions to do this as fast as possible, where I can just be ready to deny those deer wherever they're going to set it. And even if they make a few spearmen, the Keshik, they can take them on because of their abilities to, um, you know, steal health from uh, their enemies. Okay, so we get eight on food right now, two on gold. I'm doing a little circle. With the Mongols, you do have to do a drop-off of sheep at the town center. And, of course, me used to playing the Abbasid, you don't have to do that. So it's taken a little bit to get used to um, to actually returning to the town center. Okay, so I've got my eight on food. Now I've got my three on gold. I am going to start putting some villagers on wood, and I'm going to try to put them on the down tree already just so they can start gathering that right away. You want to be saving up wood essentially for that stable because I want it so when I hit the next age that stable is done because what we'll do is we'll immediately start double producing the Keshik okay so we're getting close got three on gold eight on food as I said and I want to leave those three on gold as a job that's pretty much it if I feel like I'm under pressure I might eventually drop a tower on this gold just to protect it or if I think raids might be coming um, so kind of depends now Against civilizations like I'm playing French right now, this would be a civ I would be most likely to do a tower rush against. I probably wouldn't do this against them, but it, I find that honestly both these civ strategies work against a lot of civs interchangeably. It's kind of your style and your map and how you want to play the game, and it's nice to kind of be able to do something different. Now I go for the deer stones in most of my matches. So see, I got five doing that right now. I've got my. I'm going to leave just a few on food here. I'll put the next one on food here because I like to have four. Four or five on food. And then actually, we're gonna need so I'll put a six on food here, actually. So I think I'll actually have enough wood looking at this. Um, so you can go for the trade, of course. Trade's really good, because if you got them pinned down, you can do trading. I kind of prefer trade sometimes when I've got, uh, when I do a tower rush, I have a line of towers behind it, so that, you know, I know that my trade is secure. It, I find that people who are really aggressive with their horsemen, are going to harass your trade a lot in with you know if you're not building your own horsemen it's very hard to chase them down and secure it deer stones gives all your villagers a little extra speed of course uh, since it gives out that yam so it's kind of a, a nice eco boost uh, is the way i see it and i like to have it okay so i've got my uh my my, my wood for my stable so i'm gonna go ahead and get that built and we're gonna go for double producing this keshik so i'm gonna kind of get an id now you can see you can toss that your scouting falcon over their base and kind of see what's going on. Of course, the AI is doing weird things like going up with the trade landmark, which isn't uh, it's in standard. 
Um, now, I could have built this table a little earlier, maybe threw some more villagers on this so we have this immediately done. But you kind of get the idea. I'm kind of talking to you, so it's it's not, not the end of the world. And I'm going to put these guys all back on food because they're going to be super food intensive here for the early stages of this. The nice thing here, actually, is uh, my, <laughs> my stone's at the front, so I'll be instantly queuing up those Keshik going forward, which would be nice. Okay. So now we've gotten to this stages of the game. You see, I'm trying to hurry up some food and boom, I can get my first double production of Lancers. The food macro is probably the harder part of this. I could have maybe even put like one or two less on wood just so to like really get that down um, precisely, but it's gonna work out. Cause you see, I'm gonna need another 120 food here. So it gets, it gets pretty tight macro wise. Um, so just know you're gonna need pretty food heavy early on, at least, you know, to, to open up with this. Okay, and we're gonna just about have this. You can see here that'll finish and I'll be about the exact time that the second one will come out. So I'm gonna scout, see what my target's going to be and just send my Keshik over there. And look at that, perfect. I'm able to get my second batch queued up. And it's just a nice opening. Now, it seems like France, like, you know, they might have one knight coming out. Again, I would open up with Spearman against them probably, but you're gonna have two. And you can run around, you can split them up if you need to. And what I'll often do is like take the first pair of them and just set them to attack near, you know, get vision and, you know, attack near the gold. And then the ex next batch that comes out, I'll shift and rally them to a different spot. So they'll see this, hopefully react with some spearmen, and then I'll back off. <laughs> Look how they I built this. And I'll go to another spot. And now we're to a point of, okay, now I can single produce these. And looking at the wood, this is a time where I might come up and be like, okay, let's start adding some towers. And I might add a tower here. I might even bring two towers and start. You just want to get line of sight around their base and see what they're doing, where you want to harass. Maybe you set this tower out here on their deer to deny that. But from this stage of the game, you can kind of do whatever you want. Maybe this is a good time. You can pick up your wheelbarrow. But you see the macro. Uh, food starts to get heavy once you've got those initial ones off. So you might want to like remacro a few on the wood. Uh, or kind of depend on what you want to go for. Maybe you want to go for some kind of fast castle build. But typically after this, they'll answer with spearmen. So I will. I would have already put down some archers, started producing some archers. But it's super fun. A nice little uh, double opening here with Keshik. Of course, uh, I've used this on ladder to get up to Conqueror, and it's worked pretty well. And uh, it's a fun strategy. So that is going to be build number one. And I'm going to go ahead and restart, and I'll show you the more traditional Spearman open. Now, many of you probably know this one uh, by heart because it's been the, the kind of classic opening from the Bongles, but just kind of want to show you how it works in season five. And again, I'm rather new doing this. There might be some uh, optimizations, but overall, it's been good enough to get me to Conqueror. Okay, so I'm going to put all my villagers onto wood uh, and get my Ubu. And there we go, I'm going to get my initial sheep. Now, you can scout with your Gur if you want to do the extra APM, but I'm not going to worry about it for the sake of this video. And you generally want to send your Khan forward to scout for your sheep. Okay, I'm going to queue up my first villager. Uh, you're going to leave these first five on wood and rally all of your new vills to food. So it's pretty, pretty hard to mess up. You're just going to put your new vills on the food and leave these ones on wood for now. When this one's done, he's going back to food. Okay, he's done with that, come back to food. Now, once I have 150 wood, I am going to uh, drop my barracks next to my town center and roll it out. It saves you the, the, the it saves you the villager second of walking. They don't have to walk. Okay, so we're getting closer. Now, ideally, you want to go for a striker tree if there's one close, so your villagers don't cut down two trees like we've done here. Um, but it's not the end of the world if you do. Okay. Okay, so I'm trying to just get an idea, idea where I want to drop this tower. I'll do a, a lap, essentially, and go back to my TC. That's what we're going to do here, because I need to return some sheep, as I mentioned um, in the previous one. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to drop my barracks here. There we go. And then that one will be rallied to food. Now, one thing to know about your sheep, your villagers always go after the sheep that are down. So you want to kind of kill one with one villager in advance so that your villagers don't all decide to conk the one at the end when it all inevitably runs out. Okay, so what I do here is I'll leave, I pulled one off wood to build the barracks. I'm gonna roll it out, that guy's gonna go to food. Uh, once I queue my spearmen up, my double spearmen, and they start moving, I'll take one more off of wood and I'll send them towards the opponent's base because they're gonna be my towering villager. Okay, there we go, move that up. And then we will move two to gold to start macroing for an H up. Okay, so usually like about right now a lot of times is when I'll move to gold. So I'm going to go and take two of them. I'm actually going to pop them through the town center. You can actually do that by right-clicking on the gold, hitting G to garrison, and then D, they'll pop out the other side. Nice little trick. 
Okay, and now I'm going to start my double production on my Spearman. Look at the macro. It's looking nice. And once that pops out, I'm going to take one of these and move them on over. Now, if you want to build multiple towers, you might not want to have done this, right? But typically my goal is scare them a little bit, and then I'm going to be, from there, uh, trying to age up. So I'm going to rush across just because I want to see where his gold is. I think it's over here somewhere. So there we go. Our spearmen coming out. Going to escort the villager. Make sure you've got them with the villager so that they don't get caught up by a scout uh, or that you can immediately protect this villager as they are dropping a tower. Okay. Now, scouting could have been changed a little bit here, but is what it is. Now, a lot of times I might leave these on wood just a little bit longer if I want to build, like, enough wood for two towers or something, which can be the case. So I might even just, like, right here, I'm going to put one more on there. But, you you know, you can adjust this on the fly depending on your flavor of how you want to do this rush. But you can see in general, I've got the wood I need for uh, my tower. I build two double productions of spearmen, and then I stop. I don't overdo it on the spearmen. Now, if you're going for a Dark Age spearmen battle, maybe you want to add more. That's up to you. Okay, and I'm going to go in and poke, but the most important thing here is to try to get your tower either by uh, like gold and berries or gold and wood or something like that, but you typically want to try to push them off gold, particularly like French or something like this. But you want to like poke in here, but do not lose your spearmen to the town center. That's a very, very important thing. It's easy to happen if you don't pay attention because they'll aggro you as villagers and walk back to the town center. Okay, so see, I put more, a few more on wood, so I will actually have enough to get a tower here at about the time this thing finishes. And it's pretty cool. So we push them off gold. Now he's probably got enough to age up. But from here, you kind of get intel on what they're doing. And often by opening with this, it forces them to open with spearmen, which then you just, okay, you know, I've already got the gold to age up. You see my macro here. Imagine if I had these guys on food during this too, I could age up even faster. You're going to age up, and then you're going to just start producing Keshiks and chasing them around with your line of sight, kind of see what the poke, which is fun. And unlike before, you know, you had the speed of the horsemen, but now you'll have, and look at those resources kind of help me, boost me into aging up as well. So there we go. I'm going to put a ton of villagers on this. Make sure I still have four on food. There we go, four, four on food. Okay, I'm back up. And I got some resources for burning that. And now I'm going to get inside that tower and just chill. And look on our wood. We got enough now to build another tower. So maybe, you know, you go up to their wood line. Or in this case, maybe, you know, it's, it's French. So I might not build it in front because the knight's probably going to find me. I might try to sneak one behind their wood to where they might be about to expand. And now I'm going to get a stable ready to go. I'm going to walk out for this one. Um, but, okay, where's my con? Okay, there they are. And you can use that falcon and kind of see, okay, what are they doing? Uh, what's the, what's the opponent building? But essentially now what I want to work towards is, uh, being able to get this Keshik once I get to the next age. So I'll build this tower, uh, right here in a second. But I spent some of this wood because I went really quickly for that barracks, or for that stable. Okay, so you see he's actually built, um, a barracks. So maybe if I saw this right away, I might say like, okay, not going to go for a stable. Uh, maybe I'll open with archers might be the first thing I want to open with, which is something you can do. Okay. Now we are in the next age. That's almost done. We'll be dropping off some food. This guy will be dropping off. If you really want to, you can chop into the trees, which is really crazy and drop a tower, which really messes with them quite a bit. Okay. And I'm just trying to get the resources to, um, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade my Spearman uh, to get this double produc producing of Keshe. But you see, for the most part, very close here. There we go. I've got my double producing Keshe out. And now I've got, you know, I've got some vision on them. I've got a second tower coming out with a little bit of refinement here. Could have had that second tower going up much sooner uh, and kind of playing out. Like if you see the opponent bringing archers and chasing you, just run that villager way. Maybe drop back and drop a tower in one of these stealth forests. I like to put them in the stealth forest. So you can kind of see them coming across the map because line of sight is going to be your best friend. As Mongols, of course, you can upgrade your towers with the arrow slits uh, so that you can get a little more range and, of course, take some shots at those villagers that might come out uh, or whatever tries to attack you. But that's basically it. Yeah, you're going to open up with Spearman, drop a tower. You can mess around with the macro a little bit, but basically don't get stuck in the feudal age. Work towards an age up so that then you can uh, do stuff. Now, ideally, if you really, a lot of times people will pull villagers to attack your tower, and I love it. It's like, okay, that's my goal is to waste their villager seconds. I don't actually expect to kill villagers a lot of times with these outposts, but sometimes you even get them with, with your four Spearman. They overcommit, and you're able to pick off a villager uh, or even two sometimes. It gets crazy. Uh, but you can look there. He's already like done a response there. He's distracted by my towers and not attacking me, which is what I want. You can also go the trade route on this and roll this into the corner. Uh, 
uh, I often even times will just pick up the superior mobility uh, just because I've got people on gold already. I've got the wood macro and then I can move it very quickly out um, or move some of my buildings around. But that's going to be it. Basically, you can do a double production Keshek opening or you can go a barracks kind of uh, tower rush opening. And then from here, your goal is really to uh, try to hit raids on the opponent and then work up towards the castle age. Because in the castle age, you can of course start up upgrading your towers to have spring golds. You can start grabbing the relics, uh, assert more map control. And you can also, if they've committed to the second age, start producing some man at arms or some siege to really uh, try to win the game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little bongle starter pack. Let me know that's uh, about some of the strategies maybe you're trying out on the ladder. Uh, as I've mentioned, I've been getting into this civilization uh, here in season five and having a lot of fun playing them and i think there's a lot of maps that really work for them well and a lot of fun different ways you can play the mongol so hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down in the comments if you did and if you enjoyed the video make sure you subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching and i'll see you over in one of my next live streams on twitch.tv slash thanks for watching